Hello, everyone, and welcome to our new series, which is going to be a multi-part series on the future of the calling business. Uh, what we're going to do in this multi-part series is really look at calling as an industry, talk about the customers, talk about the partners, and what is Cisco's take on the industry, as well as bring in outsiders, people who know the business. Some of them are our customers. Some of them will be our partners. But today we actually have an analyst. We have Diane Myers from Omdia Research joining us. But I'm going to kick things off with Larissa Horton, who runs our calling business here at Cisco, and ask her, why are we doing this? Why all of a sudden is there a need to talk about the calling industry, Larissa? I mean, you and I talk about calling. We know how important it is. Diane has mentioned to it in some of her work as it's the lifeblood of a business. But do we need an episode and a webcast to remind people on how important calling is? What's your take on that? Well, DP, I think, you know, like you said, day in and day out, we talk about calling. And yet the customers we talk to and even some partners have this huge fear around is calling going away, which I think is just very confusing for me and, and for the team and, you know, even various analysts that I talk to around how critical calling is for businesses to run, right? Whether that is the external facing, you know, number that people are using to reach you, um, whether it's the way you work with partners, with, with you know, various people in the industry. Um, we've all been in meetings for the last year and, and video on. And I think there's this thinking of, does everything go away to either chat or a meeting? And the thing that I, I think we forget is the ad hoc nature of a phone call is mm -hmm. you don't know when a phone will ring. You don't know who is going to call you or when they're going to call you. And that's not something that you can easily you know, change as a workflow or get rid of. Uh, so for me, that's really what we're focusing on is where is it that businesses still rely on this phone number as a yep. way to reach either one person, a group of people all at once, um, or just whoever's around uh, across your wide range sure. of people who can sure. answer a question. So I think that's been a really different way of thinking about where is calling evolving to and how is this evolving? But yeah. you know, that's I think that's how we talk about it definitely as a team is how do we modernize and reimagine those? Because I don't think those are going anywhere. Yeah. No, no. It's something that we talk about all the time, Larissa. And I think, Diane, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was, you know, there's this belief that, oh, I have an app. I clicked on it. I made a call. Therefore, I'm in the calling business. And the reality of calling, especially, <laughs> exactly, there's a big difference between what I call business telephony and sort of, can I make a call? What is your take? Are people over rotating yeah. on the fact that they were in a meeting and they had a call and suddenly they think the calling industry has been solved with one click? Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, calling is still fundamental, right? It's still a kind of that core um, utility, right? <laughs> you know, for, for businesses, right? They, you know, they need to be able to be reached by customers and by partners. And I'm not even talking about call centers, right? Or contact centers, right? But, um, you know, we have plenty of small, mid-market, we have um, private and public companies who need to be able to be reached, right? I think about on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, I may have to call a school for one of my children, right? I need to, or they need to be able to reach me, right? That's a phone call, right? That's not setting up a video conference, right? <laughs> That's not <laughs> sending me a text message. There, there's, there's something that needs an immediate attention, right? Or I need to, to call um, a doctor's or a dentist office, right? Um, you know, things, you know, and there's also that personal connection, right? Yeah. That can, can't really be easily replaced. I mean, video has come really far and, and, you know, and it's really great, especially in the last year when we've all been kind of hunkered down in, in different ways, but, um, but by the same token, not everyone is bought in front of a laptop or a tablet and, and it can't necessarily, you know, if I'm doing a one-to-one -one call, you know, maybe I don't need a video, right? You know, sometimes I just need that 10, 15 minutes to get on the phone to resolve an issue. Right. Maybe it's with a supplier. Maybe it's with a partner. Maybe it's with that 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 small, um, you know, business or, or hospital or what have you um, on a consumer level. But, you know, fundamentally, I still need to be able to be reached. Right. And yeah. that's you know, I think that's just the baseline for most businesses that they expect it to work. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I think you bring up a good point, Diane, is, you know. Calling and phone numbers are ubiquitous. Everybody has one. Every business has one. It isn't going away anytime soon is what you're saying. I think that's a key thing. But do you think us in the industry, and um, I'll stay with you on this, Diane, from 
from an industry perspective, do you think it's fair? People think, oh, it's phone calls, it's dial tone, and this industry has not innovated. So sometimes when I talk to our uh, service provider partners, you know, they get a little annoyed because they know the level of innovation that's happened in the telecom space, specifically around calling. But do you think it hasn't innovated as fast or do you think that's changing now with the advent of cloud and newer technologies? What are you seeing in yeah. the market? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I guess for, for the most part, I think the fundamental is that people think of it just dial tone, right? They, they expect to hear, hear hear that noise, right? And and that there is not much to innovate on just pure dial tone, right? Yep. But there is absolutely, right? When we think about how we integrate voice in, into other pieces of the, of the business, right? And I'm not talking about just the, the click to call, but I'm thinking about that experience where, um, but, but, you know, in, in a more mid-market or a larger enterprise where, um, maybe I do need to escalate this into a video and I need to bring in other people, right? So maybe, you know, so when we think about innovation and things that the cloud can enable, it's around that, you know, taking a call, um, what might start as a call and escalating it up to a video or to a larger meeting or, or reverse, right? Maybe I need yep. to, to break out and do something one-on-one -on -one and, and maybe this is a sensitive topic and we just need to have that. So there is absolutely ways to innovate and the cloud enables that. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. The cloud isn't, you know, the cloud isn't innovative, but the cloud is the enabler, right? Yeah. To help us do all this and in, 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 in areas around doing APIs, right? And I think, you know, the, the industry hasn't been as focused probably in the last 18 months right? because, yeah. you know, because there've been other priorities, right? And there's been other yeah. things that need to be taken care yeah. of to really help us in, the, in this environment. But it's not to say we shouldn't be thinking about it, well, right? And you. that we shouldn't, that we shouldn't push it aside. Absolutely. And I'll tell you the person who has been thinking about it is Larissa. It's almost the perfect setup for her, which is she spent the last 12 months thinking, not just thinking, as we've all sat at home uh, in the pandemic on these WebEx sessions. Larissa and the team have been focused on all of the innovation around calling. So, Larissa, can you give us a couple of examples of what your team's working on? Um, I have some sneak peeks into them, but I'd love to hear from you and the audience wants to hear what, what are the things that you're working on that are innovative around the calling space? Well, luckily, Diana already pitched the first one, which is going from <laughs> a PSTN call and escalating that into a full-blown meeting. Uh, and when we think about like, why is that useful? It's because typically, you know, I may pick up the phone to call someone for a quick question and then we realize, oh no, we need to add this person. And actually, if I drew this for you, you would probably get it. Or if I showed it to you, it would be easier to understand now that there's more people. And so we do think that escalation being available is a really interesting workflow evolution um, of now I can go from a PSTN call to a full whiteboarding session, screen share session, and um, have the WebEx assistant take notes for me, have real-time translation as we add more and more people. So a lot of those capabilities coming into play from this um, overall escalation of experience. But not only that, um, I, I tell the team all the time, we're in this really unique point in time where everyone has been at home. Everyone's much more comfortable in front of a video. It's not that we haven't had phones with cameras that can do video, right? We just haven't been as comfortable turning it on as we probably are today. Um, and there's a new level of empathy that I think gets driven by having video on. And so we've been looking a lot at how do you inject video into all the things that we're calling workflows. For example, the IVR, right? Being able to see everything that is on a menu is probably faster than listening to press one for this, yeah. press two for that. So there's some interesting time savings there. But not only that, when I look at how marketing media has changed and Instagram and, and micro marketing that is happening, I think of like the hold times that I'm on on a phone. I was actually calling um, a, a resort to try and figure out at some point we can take a vacation. How do we go and do this? And while I was on hold, they were telling me that their spa is not open. And now this is happening with the pool. And, that, and I'm like, this is marketing time. This whole time is marketing time. How do we enrich that? And so we're also doing video yep. on hold. Um, so really starting to evolve the overall experience to inject video with our cloud. But not only that, I think it's delivering value at a much faster pace than people are used to in calling, right? We're no longer looking at long cycles. It's every month you're getting something new in calling that will slowly shape mm -hmm. and change the way you think of a phone call. I think the empathy part is really yep. big, right? Being able to, I ask my team all the time, if you had to look the person in the eye that you were going to yell at when you wanted to change your flight or miss the flight, <laughs> would your tone change? Right. If you could see the, you know, the extra thousand dollars, maybe your auto mechanic is asking you for because they're telling you why it's dangerous and you can see that your brakes are gone. 
would you change your gut reaction of this person's ripping me off? Right. And I think it's in yeah. those conversations, yeah. in those businesses, which aren't always contact centers, um, that I think yeah. you drive just a different level of empathy, which is the part that I think is very compelling for us is we can change the way yeah. strangers yeah. talk to each other and how we all drive empathy when having conversations with one another. Yeah, I do think, I mean, you bring up a good point about empathy. I think I remember reading a stat about 40% of a conversation is based on the tone of the person. So when you talk to somebody, you're listening to the voice. I think we live in these video sessions, especially in the last 12 months. We're forgetting that it's the tone of the person. And, you know, Maya Angelou said how you make them feel. I think a lot of that is is our own voice. Diane, you, you brought up another interesting point, which is this concept of cloud transformation. You know, every one of our partners, when we talk to whether they're service providers or VARs, we're always talking about cloud transformation. And it also varies from geo to geo, right? We see, yep. you know, Europe is different than Asia Pac. Do you think the cloud and the fact that businesses are moving more workloads to the cloud um, is going to accelerate this whole innovation yeah. in, uh, in calling because of what Larissa yeah. mentioned, right? <clears throat> a lot of those technologies are cloud native technologies. Are you seeing that? Yeah, well, world? obviously, right, on the just the pure development side, right, there's the cloud speed, right? And to be and then not only to be able to develop them, but then to push them out, right, you know, versus having people do their own uplifts and upgrades. You know, the challenge is that um, while we have seen the adoption of cloud for collaboration and conferencing and meetings in this last year, you know, it's it's been a little bit harder to rip out, you know, that that old PBX, right? It just, you know, um, but I will say that I, you know, and, and in lots of conversations we've had and in surveys we've done, this last year has been kind of the pivot point for businesses to recognize, look, it's just as reliable in the cloud, right? And sure. I think that's been part of it, right? There's been an investment in in these things, but there's also look, it works, right? Why do I rip it out when it when it works? And, um, and there's that understanding and there's that pivot that we've seen happening with CIOs and IT managers that say, yeah, th this is fine. We're going to go down this path. Does it happen overnight, right? It's easy to, to um, you know, to get a WebEx license and to get conferencing up and running within minutes, right? Or, or, or pretty quickly, right? And, um, and it doesn't work as quickly on voice, right? Because you have to port DIDs and, you know, if you have other pieces and, and if you need new phones, if you want that desk phone experience still, um, but, it, but it's happening. And yep. there is this recognition that says, look, I'm comfortable doing that. It may take a little bit of time, but I also not only am I comfortable doing it, but I want some of that, um, those, those value adds, right? And especially as businesses start to understand and recognize things that they saw maybe in the meeting space happen are applicable in the in voice the space, yep. right? And can really give them, especially in, in some areas where people are going to continue to work hybrid. Right, they're not always going to be in the office, so we're going to have to learn to work in this new hybrid in, um, environment. And you're going to need some of those capabilities and some of those really great innovations that happened this last year to show up on the voice side. Yeah, right. Yeah. To make it even better. Absolutely, and I think Larissa, I think that's a perfect uh, question for you. Is you also oversee strategy for the collaboration business, which is calling, there's meetings, there's contact center, obviously there's a device portfolio and messaging. Diane talked about how, you know, the cloud's helping. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic, while it was bad, has spurred businesses to look at cloud transformation a lot more than they did maybe 24 months ago. Do you see inherent advantages in the fact that, you know, uh, Diane mentioned, hey, I can get WebEx meetings online. I can be up and running in five minutes. Do you see that happening in calling as well, where you should be able to be up we and do. running in five minutes? We do. Um, I think. There's a couple of things we're looking at. Obviously, ease of access is one. Being able to go online, sign up, quickly get started and, and going is important. But I think there's something else that you mentioned, which, you know, while ease of acquisition is one thing, ease of deploying at scale for your entire company and all of your workflows, I think, is a thing that is still evolving. One of the hardest transformations I see in the calling space is you have calling experts, people who are constantly <laughs> right. managing your IVRs, doing yeah. your ad moves, your MACDs. And yet when we evolve the software, in theory, you know, a, a branch manager should be able to do that. A, man, a line manager could go in and say, I have a new employee, I'm gonna add them. And it should be yeah. that easy, right? This is where I think software evolution <laughs> helps with taking things that are very complex and making it easy for, you know, someone with minimal knowledge to be able to complete that task successfully. 
Um, so I think those are kind of the two areas that we're really focusing on is what are tasks that we can now um, bring down to the business level, to the line of business that they can manage and, and do on their own? And how do we make it easier to get it through avenues like webex.com. So we're super excited that we're solving both problems. Um, I actually think as early as this month, um, <laughs> you're going to see some of those evolution uh, pieces coming out. And so we're, we're really excited about that. Yeah. So you talk about cloud speed, Diane. I mean, this is one of the things that we deal with at Cisco as we go through our transformation, right? You look at all the news that's coming out of Cisco is uh, the importance of the cloud, but we also talk about hybrid, right? There are different people in different parts of the journey. What are some of the no's or objections, right? Larissa mentioned there are always industry experts who tell you, aha, but there's <laughs> feature 99 that you don't support. Right. Um, do you see uh, them relenting? Do you see a change? Yeah. Yeah, well, gosh, I have so many great stories along that, line, that line, right? You know, the person who wants to say the the button on the phone to work exactly how they did twenty years ago, right? You know, yep. The, yep. you know, the call hold or the call forward button has to work, and, and and those people are still out there, right? I mean, it's it's inevitable, right? Change is hard, but um, you know, not to keep going back to this last year, but I think this, you know, the pandemic for everyone has changed. opened, yeah, has changed and said, look, we have to learn how to be flexible. Um, and, um, you know, even for that IT manager, but not even the IT manager, but all their employees, right? Because I, I tend to think when I when I talk to folks who are who are kind of on the front line of dealing with, you know, with their employees and with, you know, especially with calling, is that they don't want things to change for their employees because they don't want to have to deal with all the blowback, right? <laughs> like, you know, you've yep. changed something for me and I used to do it this way and now I can't and and I, I can't figure out how to get to my voicemail or <laughs> whatever. It's 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 all out there. But um, you know, everyone from the you know from the worker all the way up to the CIO has learned, right? I have to be flexible, and there are lots of great tools out there, and we should take advantage yeah. of that, right? Yeah, I think in I think terms of workflow. Sorry, one thing to add there, DB. I think it's actually the desk phone has become interestingly polarizing for folks who've managed yeah. to make the transition to the soft phone. It's like, oh yeah, this is as good. Easy. And for the folks yeah. who realize how much more efficient they were on a physical phone um, compared to a desk phone, it's almost like. You, ha you, you know, you have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands now because <laughs> I just get more stuff done. I am just more efficient. You know, I'm blindly doing things. I'm, you know, so it's interesting to see how that is evolving and what is truly uh, that is a tool as part of a workflow that just makes me better, faster at my job versus no, I can easily replace it with something. And, and I think that has been a uh, interesting learning as what is really critical to, for you to do your job right. well. Uh, yep. in comparison to good enough replacement, right? Which is yep. kind of what we were settling for in the last year. Yep. That's right. So, That's right. So, so Larissa, when you talk about the challenges in cloud migration, one of the things we talk to are, there are different kinds of customers, right? You mentioned there are small business, you're talking to your auto mechanic or uh, uh, the, the classic SMB, and then you've got the large financial services customer that wants call recording and compliance mm. and all of these intricacies. Do you see sort of the split environment? Is there room for a hybrid world where companies are going to say, hey, I'm going to keep part of my calling in the cloud where they say, look, for my knowledge workers, uh, we're going to deploy cloud, leverage all the innovation that I can get. But for a core component, whether it's traders on the floor or whatever the example is, do you see that happening in the market or are they going all in one way or another, what are you seeing in the market? I think when I talk to customers, they feel like a lot of their choices are, if I go to the cloud, I get ease of, or not ease, I don't have to manage the deployment. So that's kind of the operational lift, mm -hmm. but there is the concern that Diane mentioned, will they do it as, as well as I have been doing it myself? And then there's also the like complexity of that deployment, which is like hand designed by these people in most cases, yeah. right? It was this very tied to the business business workflow logic um, that is very hard to replicate. And I think folks are finding that for very simplified workflows, those are easier to move to the cloud. Um, mm -hmm. But then the balancing act becomes, do I want to manage multiple call systems? Because this I can move with ease, but this is like, it's so hairy. I don't even want to think about what it would take to move it. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm slowly having to gr gain some trust in the cloud. Um, I think that's one thing that we've actually been focusing on quite a bit is this hybrid deployment of you can have parts on-prem, you can have parts in the cloud, yeah. um, but also you can have, you know, dedicated cloud instances where people, again, want to just take 
um, all of the, the knowledge and logic and not lose a lot of it while moving the operational piece off um, and blend that and still have really only one call system as much as they can, right? So like common dial plans, um, th those kinds of things become important because it does take, you know, a task that I would have had to do two or three times and puts it all in one place and allows you to manage it once. So there's there's those pieces as we've been evolving our portfolio, we're thinking about how does this, you know, 100,000 line migration really work? Like that typically won't happen over a weekend. It's it's a really disruptive thing. Um, and so there's a lot of caution thrown at that and, and how that will happen. It will happen faster probably than it ever happened before, but still not in a single yep. weekend. Yeah, so it looks like there's different parts of the journey or different stages of the journey <clears throat> customers are in. Um, Dan, I want to come back to you. As this transformation happens, does it change who the players are who provide calling? You've got this interesting dynamic oh. in the market, right, where you've got obviously Cisco and <laughs> our competitors doing it. You've got other players. Do you see changes as who is your calling oh. provider? Oh, for sure. Oh, hundred percent, right? <laughs> right. Um, you know, there are who we consider to be more on the vendor side or the application provider side, right? Like Cisco, and you have peers out there, um, and pure play companies, right? Who have gotten into this from the ground up, right? Um, and they are right. They're providing you your bill. They're providing you the phone service. And then there's this kind of hybrid, right? And then there's the the traditional operators, right? Who might be partnering with someone like Cisco right, mm -hmm. or someone else to, to kind of walk through this journey with them. And, and they, you know, they own, um, you know, long histories and contracts with phone and, and you know, and ISDN connections and, you know, and, and the PSTN and, um, and they're in there too, right? And, and yep. so I think for, um, you know, for a smaller business you might feel comfortable going all in, right, with like a Cisco and saying, look, I'm just going to give you all my calling. But, I'll, you know, and, Larissa brought, and, I, and I was shaking my head a lot when Larissa was talking because we have so many larger enterprises and, you know, some of them are domestic, many are multinational that are very complex, right? And we see this and I, and I talk to so many companies, right? Where some parts are, are going fully cloud, some are gonna, you know, the, it's just the complexity of the business. And then often it, you aren't gonna necessarily hand that all over to kind of a newer company in this space, right? The new phone company. Sure. You're probably gonna work with a variety of partners right, to make that happen because it is a lot more complex, right? And so you might be working with that traditional telco or cable operator in conjunction with, you know, the underlining platform provider. And so we really see it, it but it has, when I think about who the top providers are for business voice services, it doesn't look anything like it did 10 years ago or even five years ago. So it sure. really has changed, right? And so I think, you know, if, if you have that complex environment, you're absolutely comfortable with companies you're used to dealing with, right? So maybe you had Cisco on my prem, right? An IPPBX or, or another vendor. Um, and maybe then I connected, if I was here in North America, maybe I connected that to Verizon or AT&T, right? And I'm kind yep. of, those are people I'm comfortable with. So I'm probably gonna yep. wanna continue to partner in that. So it really varies, it really varies, but the landscape is absolutely changing. Good, good. Well, that leaves us with the perfect closing in terms of the landscape is changing. If I were to paraphrase what the two of you have said is there's tremendous innovation already going on. Uh, a lot of it is driven by cloud transformation. I think the pandemic has sort of supercharged this innovation in the cloud. And then I think Diane and Larissa, both of you have talked about it's an exciting space to be in. Uh, we are running this as a as a four part episode. Uh, this was episode one. I want to thank both Larissa and Diane for sharing their insights with you. I want all of you to come back, and if you want to click on the link above, you can follow us and get more information about this episode as well as we will have a partner joining us on the next episode and the one after that we will actually have a customer who's gone through the challenges of migrating to the cloud and how they went about it so i want to thank diane and larissa and all of you for joining us on our first episode and look forward to more thank you, thank you.